Hello folks, how's it going? Welcome to my review of One Piece Chapter 1073. And Oda did give us a few answers when it comes to like Stussy. But I think the main point of this chapter was to amp up the pacing and get us quicker to the finale of this arc. But let's start off with the cover page and a very simplistic one. Considering we see two tanks firing at each other and what emerges is flowers. And we find out that Vegapunk, it's Vegapunk's doing... Because he, he infused the gunpowder that produces flowers, which is interesting, which earned him the Ibel Prize, which is a complete reference to the Nobel Prize, so there you go. But the thing to note here is the expressions of Caesar, Judge, and Queen looking horrified about this. My main point to this is where is this cover story going? The fact that we saw Caesar Clown and Judge recently reunite, where's that leading? Which after this chapter, another chapter we begin asking more about Stussy and get more intrigue about her. In fact, we get more intrigue about the clone than we do the, 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 the original, which I'll also touch into. We start off, and I actually thought it was interesting, starting off with the lab, and it got, and I mentioned in the last chapter, it looked like it got hit. Turns out that was the case, because you see one portion of the building, I'm assuming that's where the straw hats are in, because we see, still see them observing. But everything else looks demolished. Rob Lucci shot by Kaku's one-hit KO, by the hands of Stussy and Shaka, it would not be the only one hit KO she delivers, considering Rob Lucci's an awakened Zoan. But I, I would give the benefit of the doubt, because number one, the way she does it, kind of creative, and I like it. And the other reason is Rob Lucci could be maxed out after the fight in Luffy in Gear 5th. Because Rob Lucci immediately, after realizing Stussy has betrayed them, Rob Lucci tries to attack with finger pistol. It does not work. Because it's a it's a mirage, it's a pretty much an after image. And I love the way she had this the, the pose that she strikes when she appears right behind Rob Lucci. And the way she manages to land a blow, or well, it's not really a blow, but she you get what I mean. She approaches Rob Lucci behind like it kinda reminds me of Robin where she would where she would clutch somebody, the way she would fruit face through someone's body. You can't tell me that's what does that doesn't remind you of. Like I said, I like the way that Stussy does hit KO Lucci here, and it is a one-hit KO because she reveals the she uses the lipstick and she gets as she gets behind Lucci, jabs him with the lipstick, which is made out of sea stone, which I think was very clever and very creative. I I love that touch because it goes with Stussy's personality and and start and class, I guess. But then she just literally turns into Crown Dracula and just bites Rob Lucci because he's been weakened by the the sea stone, that's it for Lucci. That I, I, that was crazy. I, I was expecting something, but I was not expecting Lucci to go down that easily. I don't know. Could you really count out Lucci? We may see him again, but but she says, I, 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 I know you guys are strong, so I'm not going to fight you head on. Please forgive me. So I, I like Stussy's approach to this because she thought this through and calculated this. And she, obviously she was, she designed herself to take out CP0 eventually because she had the lipstick to take to weaken Rob Lucci and then KO in with the bite. Because that's crazy when you consider, like I said, Lucci is an awakened Zoan. So that's no joke. And then it immediately shifts to like Zoro and Brock looking on. Like what the hell's going on here? Like CP0 attacking CP0. And Stussy's like in communication with Shaka. It's like, yo, it's Stussy. I put both of them to sleep. They're like, Stussy made a move. But then you got the straw hats back at the lab, like freaking out, like what the hell's going on here? You notice that uh, Nami's the only one with a happier expression about this, like everybody else, like you can't really see Robin's expression, you can see her ass, which I'm not complaining about. Shaka explained, what well, well, a surprise, even after 20 years in hiding, she remains our ally. Which I get back into that, because it's going to tie into the original Stussy that we find out who that is. Shaka was asked, did you send your own spy into the intelligence agency? And Shaka meant, I didn't mean to, but that's how it turned out. So, it's looking like Megapunk had no control over Stussy's actions. She just did that on a whim. The fact that she was hiding for 20 years, who does that remind you of other than Nico Robin? I mean, come on. But Zoro and Brooke are not out of the woods yet because they got the Zephyrium to deal with because the commands have been have not been overwritten. So, Brooke and Zoro go in, which I love this because it gives them something to do in this arc. And I love how Lilf and Edison are on, on the move as well. Brooke's like, don't they seem familiar? And Zoro's like, yeah, same, especially him. So Zoro's acknowledging somebody they seem familiar. I'm, I'm wondering if they're talking about Jinbei or Kuma because they show a panel of that. We have Lilv 
approach me, the Zephyr and Mihawk, which may have been a mis fatal mistake because she's like, yo, I'm finally outside. Hey, you. And before she's able to say anything else, Zephyr and Mihawk takes a swing and then who blocks it was Zoro and blocks Mini Mihawk's attack. And I thought, oh shit, we're going to get, are we going to get a clone of Zephyr and Mihawk versus Zoro in this chapter? That was awesome, but it, Zoro protects Lilf, which is kind of interesting considering Zoro did not trust Vegapunk at, at the beginning, which is why he didn't go with them. But he also said not to leave the city unguarded, so. But then Jinbei is about to open fire on Edison, and Lilf seems more emotional about that than she does about Mihawk attacking her, but it doesn't matter because so Sanji takes care of that and Sanji saves Edison, so Lilf's joined about that, so that was kind of cool. We get Sanji show up go anywhere because the Zephyrium have been put under control and they stopped the rampage thanks to Stussy and uh, I love Stussy's explanation like, Shaka I put the sea stone on Luchi and Kaku so I'm, I'm assuming like did she overwrite the commands of uh, the Zephyrium too because they just stopped so that was kind of cool and then Vegapunk or Shaka says thank you Stussy we are leaving the island you should come too and then Stussy's like understood so is she tagging along alongside the Vegapunk 6 the actual Vegapunk and and Bonnie, so that could be kind of interesting. I don't know if the Zephyr are going to tag along. I'm assuming they will, considering who he finds out with Kizaru. But then we see Luffy. Uh, Whoa, Bonnie, where you? Where'd you go? Where are you? I I said this before. Luffy has to and be a part of that. He and Bonnie are going to team up against the World Government. That's obviously where this is going. Whatever that memory of Kuma is. That Vegapunk did not want Bonnie to find out. She's going to find that out. And when she does, that's going to push it. That's going to flip the switch and make a decision. She's going to help out Vegapunk and align with Luffy to stick it to the world government. That's my prediction. Plus, she doesn't have a ship. So where's she going to go? Her ship got munched by a creature created by Vegapunk. So remember that. I find it interesting that Bar Luffy's calling for Bonnie and Vegapunk. So it, this they're not leaving this island without both of them. Odin decides to tease that I'm not sure there's anything about Barney or Vagapunk. Instead, he says, however, an event will occur. The disappearance of Vagapunk. We know Barney's with Vagapunk right now, so he hasn't disappeared. It cuts over. So speaking of random, it cuts over to New World Sphinx Island, hometown of Whitebeard. And we see Marco's obviously returned from his saga at Wano. And we see the residents there were targeted by Marines since hey, Marco was away. Obviously, the government still corrupt because they were looking for the Whitebeard's treasure and they were willing to kill elders and kids to get this treasure. So, there you go. By the way, that Marine kind of reminds me of the same Marine that tried to steal the money from Nami. And we get explanation through Miss Buckins, or as we find out, the original Stussy, Buckingham. Whitebeard Jr. Weevil took care of Marines, but at the same time, we find out what happens to him as well. Ask for backup for reinforcements, and according to you see, well, first off, before we see Miss Buckingham approach Marco, it cuts to the fleet, the fleet of warships that Kizaru summoned, and you see the world government flag, and and all of a sudden you see Kizaru talking to one of the five elders. I like how we finally get a name and introduction to one of the five elder stars, the five elder stars, Saint Jacasia. Saturn. So he's also with Kizaru right now, and I think it's kind of obvious why he's there because, as as we met, as we know, when it comes to like the overwrite the ship, the command ship, uh, the Zephyrium, the five elders have more authority over that over Vegapunk. So that would make total sense as to why he's here. Because I don't see him fighting one v one with Luffy. Do you? I'm guessing that's to cause a lot of hype for this so-called event that's about to occur which Oda teased and cut away from. So obviously we know where this is leading. I expected to see CP0 to be taken down before the end of the arc because obviously they're not taking down the Straw Hats. So now they got more pressing matters with an Admiral and now one of the Five Elders making their way who could possibly overwrite the command ship of the Zephyrium. That could be a problem, but then we get the introduction to the original former Rocks Pirate Member, self-proclaimed scientist, real name Miss Buckingham Stussy. So there's the reveal. I listen. I know the people came up with this theory who was 
speculating about this are the ones that are feeling very validation right now. I'm not one of them because I didn't make a theory for this because I don't really care about this character. I'm sorry. I did care. I know she there was a mention of her being in the Rocks Pirates, but when you when you could when you mention the Rocks Pirates and a majority of the former pirates who were part of that crew, young Whitebeard, young Kaido, young Charlotte Lin Lin, you hell even Stu, even Shiki had more of an impact. Was the first person to escape in Pearl Down, followed by Luffy. So up until this point, we really haven't seen all that much of. Miss Buckingham, I'm, I'm assuming that's what's done by design for from Oda. So I can see that, but to, for me, it doesn't do anything. Like, even if that's the intention, it doesn't do anything for me. Because all she's been doing is, like, hiding behind Weevil. We thought at first she was, like, trying to manipulate Weevil, thinking he was Whitebeard Jr., Whitebeard's son, because he was an idiot. But we find out there's more to it than the meets the eye. First off, the fact that she approached Marco and by the way we're looking for Marco anyway to confront him. whether or not it was going to turn into a fight I don't know but so we find out that we through her that Weevil was the one that protects the, the residents of Sphinx, Sphinx Island Whitebeard's home turf but then she cries because the Admiral Greenbull came here and I guess defeated Weevil and took him with it and captured it now there could be some truth to this but I considering who it is coming from I would I would take this with a grain of salt because we know well, the, the the thing is, she's been she had first off she had she hid her real identity, so that's number one. Number two, the ori the clone did the same thing, but it, and it makes sense because it, the two pieces are apart. So obviously, it would make sense that the clone of the real Stussy Buckingham wouldn't want to be discovered. So she infiltrated herself to be a member of CP Zero. It's beginning more and more. She did this on a whim. And she decided on her own to help out Vegapunk because Shaka mentioned I didn't order I didn't count on this. She's been hiding for twenty years. So the fact that she was hiding, who's to say that the original Stussy wasn't doing the same? Because if people knew she was a member of the Rocks Pirates, that would cause a lot of problems. So I'll take that with a grain of salt because they were looking for Marco anyway. But I could definitely see Green and Admiral being the one to take down Weevil and capture him. She says to Marco, like, "You surely you believe that Whitebeard and Weevil are blood related?" Marco gives kind of gives a vague response. He's like, "Well, thanks for a lot for protecting the village." He doesn't really says, he doesn't really say yes or no. He doesn't really say, "Oh, he's definitely Whitebeard's son or somebody connected to Whitebeard." So I think that's kind of interesting here. You know, so it could be a trap to lure Marco. At the same time, it could definitely be implausible because Weevil created them in the first place. And it could be a, a case of where Weevil may have been created by the world government because we don't we know the what pirates were taken down. They disbanded. We don't know what happened before they disbanded. We know that Kaido was captured 17 times by the Marines. So who's to say that clone of Weevil wasn't made back then? Who's to say? And given the fact that Stussy Buckingham was a part affiliated with the Rocks Pirates, maybe that's the reason she used Whitebeard Jr. to help as protection because, like I said, if people knew who she w really was, that would cause her a lot of problems and she would be probably captured instantly. She's been pulling things from the shadows as a, as a former member of the Rocks Pirates. Now, on one hand, like I said, people are going to be seeking validation for this theory, planning out because, oh, we do this all along. I'm sorry, I didn't really care. Who she was because as this chapter confirmed the clone is a hell of a lot cooler than the original right now now i don't know if this is what stussy could have done in the prime does the original have wings under that under the coat i don't see any the fact she instantly took down two members of cypher pole just like that managed to ko rob lucci it was so creative and typical stussy like with the lipstick made be made of steel stone again if the clone chose on a whim to actually assist Vegapunk by helping out command control the Zephyrium. Who's to say she won't betray them if she could, if she tags along? Who's to say that? Maybe she, she did it because obviously it presents a better opportunity for herself because she's been hiding for 20 years. So I could definitely see that lipstick being a problem because it's made out of sea stone. If she decides to actually turn and actually go against the straw hats, I can see that. 
But again, like I said, we also have bigger problems with a member of the fight, a member of the Gorosei and Kizaru heading the Straw Hats direction. The exception of Doflamingo, we know what happened to each of the Shishibukai, the former Shishibukai. We know what happened to Boa Hancock and how Rayleigh saved her. We know what happened with Crocodile and Mihawk joining the alliance and joining alongside Buggy. By the way, if that's true of what Stussy, the original Stussy said about Weevil being captured, I could definitely see Cross Guild interacting with Green Ball. I could definitely see that, given the Mihawk. Because I find it interesting, they asked for, they asked for reinforcements and Green Ball just showed up. And this is why Stussy says it's a great, with a great assault because Green's brought reinforcements and Apple Green Ball just came in to deal with Weaver, Whitebeard Jr. I guess he, he's bought her after what happened with Shanks back at Wano. Yet you didn't see an, you didn't send an Admiral to deal with Mihawk, which makes absolutely no sense because outside of an Admiral, nobody's taking out Mihawk. I'm sorry, no. I kind of distrust what Miss Buckingham Stussy, the original says right now. The clone is cooler than the original, confirmed after this chapter. So I don't really care about the identity of the original Buckingham Stussy, where that's going to lead. Like I said, it could be a trap to Lord Marco. That's just how I'm feeling right now. But let me know you guys think that. I'm close to a close to that all important reveal about Kuma and where that's going to take Barney. That's, to me, the most intriguing part of the Agon Island before we wrap that up. So I can't wait to see that. That's going to do it for you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think down below. Subscribe channel for more One Piece. Thank you guys for all the continuous support. Catch you guys later. Thanks guys. Bye.